Today I am doing a video that I saw my friend Emily from Emily's Makeup Bag do. I will link her channel down below. And I believe she actually per uh, picked up this idea originally off Dolly Mama Beauty. I will also link her channel down below for you guys as well so you can see the original creator and also Emily's video. But when I watched Emily's video I was like this is a fun idea and I absolutely want to do this. So essentially what I have done is I asked my husband to pick out 10 eyeshadow palettes. They were completely random at his choosing. I just said don't pick any Pat McGrath Labs because we all know that I would repurchase my Pat McGrath Labs palettes. So I said no Pat McGrath Labs, but out of all of the other, you know, 70 palettes that I own, pick any 10 that you wish. And if he was in the room by himself, I have no idea like what he picked until he gave them to me. And I am going to show you guys what 10 he picked. And I'm going to let you know whether or not I would actually repurchase those palettes if I had my time over. So hopefully that video sounds interesting to you guys. We are going to do it on the desk format. So before we do, let's go ahead and do the YouTube things. Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and let's get into it. So I have 10 palettes that my husband has personally picked out. He told me he picked them out because they are the palettes that he likes best on me apparently or the color stories that he likes on me and you'll probably see a bit of a theme with them actually so i'm going to show you each one of the palettes and tell you whether or not i would rebuy it if i had my time over so the first palette is this little dior quint and this is the early bird quint and this was from the birds of a feather collection i believe from dior and I just had to have this palette as soon as I saw it, purely pretty much for this mustard shade. I just fell in love with this mustard shade. And this mustard shade is a little bit controversial for a lot of people. I know a lot of people really don't like it, but for me, I really like it. I actually get quite a lot of use out of it. And these little metallic shades, they're really quite pretty and very... They're a lot more sparkly than probably what I was expecting for, say, a luxury palette. I know luxury quints and quads like the Dior's and the Chanel's are usually kind of a softer pigment, whereas I find this to be quite sparkly and just very, very beautiful. The question is, would I repurchase this if I had my time over? And honestly, my logical side of my brain says no, because truly, in my large collection, do I get as much use out of this quint as I would ideally like to? Absolutely not. And if I'm honest, this red shade and this purple shade is not colors that I'm going to reach for really at all or very, very like little. But these three shades here, I would reach for quite a lot. So my logical side says, no teens, this is not a quint for you to repurchase, but the side of me that loves this mustard in these two shades right here says you need to repurchase it. So this one is kind of, it's a no. Let's just say it's a no because the logical side of teens' brain says no, but the side that loves shiny things says yes. Palette number two is the Nabla Side by Side palette. And I picked this up from Beauty Bay late last year on a discount. I had been eyeing this palette for a really long time. The color story of this palette really intrigues me with the cool tones and the slightly warm tones. And I just think overall, this is really a teens friendly palette, if you will. And the metallics in here are stunning. Like the shades are very very beautiful i i really really like them and i've only used this palette a couple of times but each time i've used it i really have been impressed with the with the looks that i've been able to achieve and it's a very everyday friendly wearable palette i guess there's a part of me that says in my giant collection would i repurchase it and i guess in my current collection hmm i guess no i probably wouldn't repurchase it if i'm honest Unless I saw it on the incredible sale that I purchased it on because I believe I paid 30 Australian dollars for this So I think for the price that I paid for it It's an incredible buy and I know myself and if I saw it again for that price point I would rebuy it But if I didn't see it on sale, I wouldn't purchase it again And if I'm honest if it wasn't in my collection I probably wouldn't highly notice just because of all of my other beautiful palettes so Let's go with a no. Let's talk about an absolute favorite. 
the NARS Climax palette. Now, I originally missed the boat on this palette. It came out last holiday season and everyone was raving about it. And I convinced myself at the time that I didn't need to spend my money on it. And I have never been more wrong about anything. And thankfully for me, I saw this on sale at Nordstrom Rack in the US for 25 US dollars and I picked it up and it was the best decision I made. And that sounds very dramatic, but this is a gorgeous palette. Look at those shades, you guys. So wearable, so beautiful, a very me color story, especially with the mattes. The quality of this uh, nine pan is impeccable, truly, truly impeccable. And if I saw this again, even at full price, I hands down would repurchase this. I have zero regrets about this nine pan. Let's talk about another palette that I would buy again nearly every single day, spoiler alert, if I lost it every day and that is the Natasha Denona Glam palette. You guys know this is one of my all-time favorite palettes in my collection. I cannot live without it. The quality of these metallics, the color story, just every single thing about this like midi palette from Natasha Denona is for me I love it. I get so much use out of it. And again, if I lost it nearly every single day, I would repurchase it nearly every single day. This is probably my favorite Natasha Denona palette that I own, hands down. It's just incredible. Palette number five is the LH Cosmetics Metallics Mysteries 2 Quad. And I don't know if my husband remembers that he actually bought this for me. Maybe he does and that's why he's picked it. So I will speak in terms of like, would I repurchase this if I lost it, even though he bought it for me? And the answer is, especially now that this is actually back for sale, and I'm going to link it down below for you guys, 100% yes. And even though I probably wouldn't reach for this red shade a whole lot, they are the best quality shadows. And honestly, I am fairly certain, and I could be wrong, but these came out either before or the same time as Natasha Denona released her Mothership palettes, and these are Pat McGrath Labs special shades. This is like the original special shade for me. I wore this gold nearly every day when I got this palette. Look at it. Is that not insanely gorgeous? And these are like those kind of like more opaque blitz shades. Like, is that not so close to subliminal? And this is a really good holiday palette, really good for winter and fall, and just really good for anyone that loves the color story, if I'm honest. It's really a great, great quality palette. And I've had this palette for years, years and years and years. And look at the quality of those shadows still. Insane. And yes, I hands down would 100% buy this again. And honestly, I need to bring this out on my channel more and give it some love. Palette number six, Anastasia Beverly Hills Soft Glam. I purchased this at the start of the lockdowns from COVID. Um, ABH had like this five day sale and I think I got this for like $40 or less. Actually, I think it was about $30 Australian, which is a great price. Beautiful palette, beautiful color story, really great, especially if you're someone that loves those kind of neutral tones you'll get a lot of use out of this the quality is really good it's that um, modern renaissance quality color story stunning you know overall this palette is just really beautiful now some of you might know kind of how i'm feeling about abh right now on my channel i am taking a little break from the brand because of reasons that you may or may not know anyway as a side note, I'm going to put them aside and decide whether or not I would repurchase this aside from the brand and how I'm feeling about them at the moment. And I've got to be honest with you, the answer would be no, I would not repurchase this palette because even though I really like the color story, it's just, and the quality is great. I just, for some reason, honestly, truly do not re reach for this palette a whole lot. I think if you're someone that only wants one eyeshadow palette in your collection and you know you want that to be this color, like neutral color story, then this is the one palette that you could get and be really happy with. But for me, when it compares to like my Natasha Denona's, my Pat McGrath, my Vizia, my Tom Ford and the other beautiful palettes I have, I really don't find myself reaching for this. And I didn't even before you know, my opinion changed of the brand. So I actually wouldn't repurchase this. Interesting, right? Next up, we have the Patrick Ta Major Dimensions One Palette. Now, I actually went through some hoops to pick up this palette because I originally wanted to get it on my recent trip to America, but it was sold out everywhere. So my girl Patty picked it up for me and I gave her the money and she shipped it over because that's how much I wanted it. So I paid quite a bit for this palette with the shipping. And I gotta be honest with you, I don't 
reach for this. And I think it's the same reason as the ABH Glam palette. I just don't know if this colour story is something that I go for every day, which I thought maybe I did, but I really don't. Now the shadows are very pretty. The shadows are really, really everyday friendly kind of shadows and it's a very wearable color story and again one of those kind of color stories where I truly think that you could probably only have this in your collection and be quite happy with it. It's just not something I constantly think to reach for because I do have Pat McGrath, I do have Natasha Denona and even the Major Dimensions too I just personally prefer. So I think for me even though the palette is beautiful and I do enjoy having it in my collection I actually wouldn't repurchase this unless maybe I saw it on a sale, but even then, I don't think I would repurchase it because I really don't get the use out of it that I thought I would. Palette number seven is the Huda Beauty Naughty Palette. And are you getting this theme here? He's obviously my husband loves me in neutrals. I saw this palette in store and just fell head over heels in love with it because untouched, I mean, even now looking at it, even though it's been quite used, it is a beautiful palette to like look at and it's just mesmerizing. So as soon as I saw it, I had to pick it up. But again, it's another one of those palettes that I feel like I really just don't get the use out of that you would think I would, especially considering that it's such a like neutral everyday palette, but I just really don't. And I'm not quite sure why. Cause look at the color story. And the mattes in here, the quality of it, it's really good. I just don't know if it's too warm for me right now and too like ready burgundy undertones for me right now where I'm at. And maybe that will change later on. But yeah, I just always forget to reach for this palette as well. But I guess the question is, would I repurchase it? And the answer is no, I wouldn't repurchase this because it just doesn't get, even though the quality's great, the color story's great, I just honestly don't get the use out of it that I should. So it is an easy one for me to say actually that I wouldn't repurchase. But I think if you're super into this color story and you kind of wear this color story every day, it's still a great palette. Palette number nine, we have the Charlotte Tilbury Smoky Eyes Are Forever palette. And I know that this particular palette didn't get a lot of love last year when it was released because I guess a lot of people had these colors already in their Charlotte Tilbury collection and probably found it a little bit boring and kind of like lackluster, which I can totally appreciate. I picked it up because I actually don't have any other Charlotte Tilbury palettes in my collection. So for me, this was kind of the perfect palette to start with because it's really the kind of tones and colors that I would wear on the everyday. I was mesmerized and blown away by the quality of these shadows truly they are insane the mattes are beautiful the metallics are incredibly pigmented and creamy and just the whole performance of every single shade in this palette is truly impeccable to me i really don't think it gets the hype that it deserves and i hands down would repurchase this palette i really would because it's also the kind of palette you can take traveling with you and kind of create like every single look that you could possibly need and want and it's just yeah, it's stunning. I really, really like this palette. So yeah, I would definitely repurchase this one. Palette number 10 is the Huda Beauty Rose Quartz palette, which I actually just recently featured in my like makeup, I forgot about makeup tutorial. And uh, it's quite funny that my husband picked this because I don't even think he knew about that video. And would I repurchase this palette? Even though I constantly forget to reach for this particular palette through no fault of its own, it is wonderful quality. I actually would repurchase this. I just love the color story. I love the formula. What happened there? I think that was a me swatching issue. There we go. It's just, look at those shades. Look at how reflective and wet looking and highly metallic they are. They're truly stunning shades and the mattes in here are great quality. It's just a color story I really like leaning for and I've actually moved this palette to kind of like my everyday palette drawer so that I'm reminded to reach for it more because yeah, it's beautiful and deserves some more love. And I actually would repurchase this. I absolutely would. It's just too pretty and look at this packaging. Look at it, it's amazing. This setup is probably hurting some of your brains and I apologize for that in advance. But these are, actually it's a 50-50 split. There you go, I literally didn't even plan that. I truly did not. But these are the five palettes that I would not repurchase. And then these are the five palettes that I would 
repurchase. So they are the 10 palettes that my husband picked out for me and that is the kind of whether or not I would repurchase any of these palettes. Let me know in the comments down below if I've made any decisions that you personally would not make or if there are any palettes in your collection where you're like I wouldn't repurchase this truly waste of money. And uh, yeah you guys know that I love hearing from you. Now uh, if you're watching till this point you're an absolute legend. Thank you so, so much. I truly appreciate it. If you haven't already, pretty please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe. It truly helps my channel out. We're so close, so close to 6K now, which is insane because I feel like we just hit 5K. And uh, other than that, I hope that you have an amazing day wherever you are in the world. And I will see you next time. Bye.